This video was supported by the Australian Government through its Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Initiative and the Foundation for National Parks and Wildlife. Talbot, Foundation Vet for the Byron Bay Wildlife Hospital. And today we're going to be talking about examining and treating frogs in the veterinary practice. It's important when you are examining frogs that you have a powder free glove as frogs have very delicate skin and can absorb the oils and chemicals from your hands. To pick up a frog, the easiest way to do it is to cup both hands on either side of the frog and gently lift them out of the container. Once you have picked up your frog and it is securely in your hands, you can now perform your physical exam. It's important to go over the whole body and note any injuries, lacerations or fractures for further work up down the track. Frogs often get injuries as a result of being closed in doors and shower screens. So check the whole body, top and bottom to make sure that you don't miss anything. Check the ventrum for any signs of redness which may indicate septicemia or infection. Ensure the frog can move all limbs and has got good muscle tone and make sure that it can climb and use all of its digits properly. Finally, open the mouth to check for any foreign bodies or injuries that may preclude the animal from eating. Often you can open their mouth just with your finger but if not you can use a paddle pop stick or a bread tie and open their mouth. To take an x-ray of your frog the easiest way is to place the frog directly on your plate I commonly use a daily towel that has been placed in a little bit of the frog's water to keep the area moist and clean. Alternatively, if the frog is a little bit jumpy, you can place it in a plastic bag with a small amount of water as well. If your frog is too jumpy, you may not be able to do a lateral, but if your frog is quite quiet, they often will just sit and hold on to your syringe casing and you can roll it on the side. If you are really concerned about the spine, you may need to anaesthetise your frog to put them in the lateral position. To obtain a blood sample, the midline abdominal vein is going to be your easiest vein to access. You may require anaesthesia to obtain a blood sample in some frogs. The vein is located in the midline, but can be quite small and difficult to get in some species. The vein is quite little, but you'll see it as a faint blue line. To give fluids to a frog, the easiest way is to actually place them in a bath of your chosen electrolyte solution. This may be Hartman's or Hartman's mixed with glucose, depending on the state of your frog's health. To give medications to frogs, you can either give it topically on top of the skin, get your desired medication and gently drop it on top of the frog and let it soak in or injections depending on the dose of the drug that you need to give and the demeanour of the frog. To anaesthetise frogs, the two most common methods are injectable drugs or topical delivery. Isoflurane can be given as a bath or can be bubbled over the frog's body. Alternatively, you can use an injectable drug like alfaxan or ketamine and domitor, which is given into the muscle most commonly in the front legs. With green tree frogs, you may need to use higher doses of your drugs. Be careful, isoflurane can irritate the skin and you may get skin colour changes as a result. If the frog seems too irritated by the isoflurane, wash off in some dechlorinated water. To euthanize a frog, first anaesthetise your frog by the chosen method and then use lethabarb via the intracelomic route. To ensure that your frog has passed away, check with a Doppler over the heart before disposing of the body. To house your frog in the veterinary hospital, use a plastic enclosure or a glass aquarium tank. Ensure that you have an area for the frog to hide and an area for the frog to go into water to rehydrate itself. Ensure you have a secure lid as frogs are renowned for getting out of their enclosures. We've covered a lot today in assessing frogs. Frogs are awesome patients to have in and we hope you enjoy looking after them. We are very grateful to the Foundation for National Parks and Wildlife for producing this video. If you have any questions regarding treating our Australian native animals, please do not hesitate to contact the Byron Bay Wildlife Hospital at www.byronbaywildlifehospital.org.